warm welcome to the earnings Zoom webinar of DigiSpice Technologies Limited for Q1 FI24. We have with us Mr. Dilip Modi, Chairman of DigiSpice, Mr. Sanjeev Kumar, Co-Founder, Executive Director and Chief Executive Officer, Spice Money, and Mr. Sunil Kapoor, Full-Time Director and Chief Financial Officer, Spice Money. Before we begin, I would like to state that some of the statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature. The actual results may vary as they are dependent on several external factors. A statement in this regard has been included in the results presentation sent to you earlier. We will commence the call with the management taking you through the operational and financial performance for the period under review, following which we will have an interactive Q&A session. I would now like to invite Mr. Dilip Modi to commence the presentation. Over to you, Dilip. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, on behalf of DigiSpice Technologies, I would like to welcome you all uh, to the quarter one call for the company. Uh, it's always a pleasure to get to interact with all of you. And uh, we've always walked away from these discussions with lots of learnings and insights uh, based on the questions and answers that we have in this session. Uh, so I'm looking forward to a similar interactive dialogue with all of you today. Um, Friends, in quarter one, uh, start of April, we took a decision to exit our digital technologies segment business. And therefore, if you see from quarter one onwards, we are only reporting in our results as uh, the financial technology services segment. Uh, so now when you look at the results, you basically end up seeing the business of spice money and related um, costs. Uh, all financials linked to the uh, digital technology services business is now shown as a single line around as profit and loss from discontinued operations. So it's much easier for everyone to now track the progress of the continuing business versus the discontinuing business. Uh, the discontinued operations will continue to get reflected in the consolidated financials of the company over the next few quarters. But we are hoping that the impact of this will just taper off and finally we will just end up reporting the financials associated to the continuing operations, which is that of Spice Money and related businesses. Uh, we at uh, DigiSpice continue to be very excited uh, about the fintech space, uh, specifically the area that we are focused on, which is rural fintech. Uh, we at Spice Money are committed to solve for the challenges around lack of access uh, to lots of consumers and merchants in semi-urban and rural India. Uh, through our Spice Money digital platform, we are enabling delivery of both financial and non-financial uh, services uh, both in deep rural India as well as in semi-urban India. Uh, over the last three to four years, uh, you know, we ha have built one of the largest of us APS networks in the country uh, with close to over 17% market share. Uh, our network is now present in over 250,000 villages of India and over 6,500 small towns. Now, as the economy progresses from $3.5 trillion to upwards, is this part of India that will significantly grow to contribute to the growth of the Indian economy. And we, through our digital distribution network, uh, see ourselves playing a significant role uh, in that GDP growth. Our focus is to leverage the Spice Money distribution network that we have built out to be able to add value to other segments. In our call today, we will share with you some of the progress that we've seen at the start of this financial year in new segments like the collections business, the banking business, as well as the credit business all three of which have already started showing some numbers this quarter. Uh, our goal continues to be to build a very healthy and robust financial and digital services delivery business. We believe that there exists significant unserved and underserved demand pools, uh, whether it be in the space of credit, savings or commerce uh, in semi-urban and rural India. And we are excited to work with a lot of product manufacturers and service providers, be them banks, leading banks in the country, NBFCs, uh, insurance players, and many other uh, players in the commerce segment to see how we can enable them to be able to deliver goods and services uh, to markets in deep rural India in a very cost efficient and viable way. Uh, so we're very excited that we start the year with now a, a, a restructured set of financials where we are now being able to demonstrate our focus on a very core business segment of ours, which is FinTech. And we hope that going forward over the next few quarters, we'll be able to show you how the business is growing uh, quarter on quarter in this particular segment. 
I'd now like to hand over to Sanjeev, uh, the CEO of the company, to walk us through some of the business metrics. Um, over to you, Sanjeev. Thank you, Dilip. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, a warm welcome uh, to this quarter one uh, results presentation. What I'll do is I will I'll go through a couple of slides on talking about the Spice Money business model and give you an update on the business uh, numbers. And then uh, I'll request Sunil to come in and to talk, take us through the financial highlights for Spice Money and also the consolidated. Uh, next slide, please. My first few slides will be a bit repetitive for others who've uh, been attending these uh, calls. But allow me to do this for anyone who's just tuned in for the first time. Uh, what are we trying to solve in Spice Money? We're actually, fundamentally, we're democratizing financial and digital services for the underserved. And how are we doing it? We're building on the digital stacks to solve for this problem of lack of access in rural India. Was this problem avail Was this problem there earlier? Answer is yes, it's been there for years. But the fact that in the last six years, uh, this country, we've been able to build open infrastructure of and, and, and digital stacks that we could leverage is what has enabled pairs like us to solve for this fundamental problem of lack of access. Uh, the current digital stacks on the left, everyone, all of us know about it, is what we've been using. The, there are emerging digital stacks, which we are aware of. ONDC is one, one, one of them. AA account aggregator is another. Even digital health ID is a, is a futuristic, very interesting digital stack that's going to emerge. Can we at Spice Money leverage the current digital stacks the way we've been doing and then also uh, bank on the new emerging digital stacks to solve for the problems of lack of access of those segments? Uh, that is the opportunity we are chasing. Next slide. Given, given this, what is our current, what is our business model? So for us, our customer is this Spice Money entrepreneur whom we call, whom we call a Spice Money Adhikari. Uh, we have enabled this person, this uh, entrepreneur with an app, which we call the Spice Money Adhikari app. On this app, we've enabled a lot of services uh, which, which he uses to serve to consumers in and around his community. Example, so if you look at it, on, on one side, you have these service pro partners like banks, in, insurance companies, NBFCs, and even the digital additional services company like commerce, travel, who want to enter rural India. We've enabled those services onto this platform, onto this app. And here, there's this entrepreneur at the in a village or a block level where a consumer walks up to him and says, hey, listen, I want to withdraw money. Can, I, can you help me? He does that. He wants to transfer uh, money to a certain account. He does that. He, want, he wants to pay his loan EMI. He wants to pay his electricity bills. He wants to, do, uh, he wants to book a ticket. So all those services that he wants to do, he visits this uh, Spice Money Adhikari and he avails the services at the doorstep, right there at the village. We believe that this current business model is a win-win because one, at the, at the center who's our customer entrepreneur, he's earning money. So the more and more products and services we enable for him, more and more business he does, more and more money he makes. So this is the entrepreneurship. Uh, on one side is the service partners who wanted to access rural India but were unable to do it. So now they're using our network and our platform to access at much lower cost. And then there is this rural consumer who was not able to get access to these services earlier, but he gets this, he or she gets this at the doorstep at his village or block. Next slide. So ultimately, what does this lead to the vision for that app in the hands of the entrepreneur, in the hands of the Spice Money Adhikari is a super app, which has all the services that we've written here. Few of them are live and we are working at a different scale. Out of the others, which are in blue, few of the services have already gone live. For example, travel, savings, credit, even in the commerce, ONDC live, G2C services are live on the platform. But we continue to work on those which are not live. And uh, over a period of time, we will ensure that all these services are live on this on the Spice Money Adhikari app. Next slide, please. Uh, and what have we done with the at the core, if uh, at the core of this, we've been able to build a network of Spice Money Adhikari. Uh, over the last uh, three years, this has been uh, growing at a phenomenal rate, and I think this is one one big 
opportunity that we saw uh, at the back of uh, a digital stack of what what NPCI built, and we've grown this network to over 1.2 million now. It covers over 2.37 lakh villages and six and a half thousand blocks. So this is the semi-urban and rural India opportunity, which we believe uh, has has this problem of lack of access. And I think, uh, I mean, if you look at the population, it's about 82 crores of Indians stay in this population, a very, very large population, a very large opportunity size. And we believe we have, we've built a network that we can leverage to solve for this problem. Next slide. Coming to some key business updates. So I'll, I'll call upon three of them. The customer gross transaction value. This is the business that the customers do on our platform. Uh, sorry, I mean the business that is done on a platform by the entrepreneurs to serve the consumers. Uh, a very, very uh, healthy growth. So we've grown, it's about 27 and a half thousand, nearly 27 and a half thousand crore in quarter one. Uh, the service fee revenue corresponding to the cust customer cross transaction value. Again, 106 crore, we say 103 crore of last year, same time. And likewise, the service fee GM, which is the money that we earn from, from these transactions is 39.3 crore. Again, 4% up than last year. So we're seeing a continued growth momentum. Uh, every quarter, we believe uh, there, are, there are different products that I'm going to talk about. Going forward, we believe that there is opportunity to now grow all products and continue this growth going forward. Next slide, please. Now, this is this is the first this is the first time I'm putting up this slide, uh, and it's very important to call out because I think this is exactly what I've been talking talking about over the last uh, four quarters uh, that I can uh, vividly rem remember is the opportunity for Spice Money to move out of just being a cash out network to being a multi product business network. We've been doing a lot of work and a lot of the investments that we did as the organization over the last 18 months were primarily to fuel this opportunity. And I'm, I'm, I feel extremely glad that all that effort and the management team that we've built, we are seeing results uh, as I speak with you. And I'm very, very confident that these results will only improve as I speak. So if you look at this, the big highlight I'm seeing, while the, while the margin has grown, but the, uh, at, the, at a higher margin, the cash in cash out contribution has declined by 10%. So what used to be an 82% contributor last year, similar time is now at 71%. Collections, which is the next big opportunity that we saw and we, we started to scale that up. It gives me extreme, extreme amount of pleasure that that business now contributes to 15% of, of the gross margin that we are earning in a quarter. That was 9% last year. So that's the kind of growth we believe will continue. There is enough opportunity to grow more. Credit, another business we're very, very excited about. Uh, it, it was contributing last year, and I'm going to talk about more in a subsequent slide. But again, something, a business line that we believe we are at a stage where we see that this business is going to go, con start contributing significantly to our overall business. Banking uh, was that, was a, is a product, it's a new entry here. It was not live last year, same quarter. It started to contribute uh, small numbers right now, but again, another business line that we believe will contribute significantly over the next few quarters. Next slide, please. I want to give an update on the four critical business, key businesses, and starting with APS first. It happens to be our first bread and butter and, the, and a right to win started here. Uh, our objective has always been to consolidate the office market leadership, continue to be the number one office player here. I'm more than happy to say that we've continued that. We are at our market share growth has grown to 17.45 even this, this quarter. Uh, needless to say, I've been talking about it earlier also that the APS office uh, business and industry level has been degrowing. Uh, certain quarters was, was stagnated, but if you look at one, uh, Q1 FI23 and Q1 FI24, it has degrown. So the overall APS business uh, has reduced, offers APS business, but our market share has always been improving. So this just shows that we continue to work to uh, consolidate this space and become a number one player. And we've been using few uh, strategies to do it. So how, how we ring fence our, our top adhikaris through some uh, preferred plans, which is a combination of better pricing and better service. 
and focusing on few districts and, and markets where we believe the network needs to get deepened more. Next. The second big one is the collection uh, business. Again, if you look at the graphs on, on, on both sides, one is CMS and one is bill payment. CMS here, which is about the cash management, bill payment is broken into two parts, which is obviously one is the utility bill payments, but what I'm requesting to focus on is in the EMI, which is the EMI loan collection that happens at the Adhikari network. Uh, it's been growing at double digits, some of the numbers are visible here. What I want us to take away from here is today, primarily is, if you look at this, at this at the at the table on the right hand right side bottom corner we had about twelve and a half thousand adhikaris transacting on the bbps platform where a customer would come to deposit his loan emi today that's gone to thirty eight thousand if you look at similar numbers the similar number was one twenty six crore in last year quarter one it's going to six hundred forty eight crore but we are even on the cms side uh, three thousand eight hundred eighty crore in quarter one last year is six thousand crore this one so we're very, very excited on this business opportunity. Our internal market size estimates that we've done here uh, confirms that there is significant room of growth for this business. And we are very, very excited to grow this business uh, as we build Spice Money over the next few years. Next slide, please. Uh, this is CASA, which is Current Account Savings Account. Uh, so we've started, we started this. This is a new uh, product entry in our uh, suite. Uh, we've, we've gone live with about 26,000 Adhikaris. This is really about less than 5%. This is about 2% of our total Adhikari base. Early days for us here. But uh, again, we, we see a big demand of this product in, in uh, rural India uh, and urban India. Actually, both rural India and urban India. And we believe that this is a significant opportunity that we can leverage here of Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, next slide is on credit. Like I just like I just mentioned, this is the APS collections, banking, and credit. These are the four important business lines that I want to talk about. Credit, if you look at, at, at this, there are a few highlights that I want to pick on here. It's not the numbers which is important, it's the way are, are we are trending towards. So we've we started with Adhikari loan. We've also launched Grahak uh, loan in this quarter. Uh, last quarter, we did we did some very minimal uh, business in Grahakland, about 41 lakhs. This scaled to 2.1 crore in this quarter. Uh, the ticket size, average ticket size, these are these are small ticket size, again, typical of our segment that we are dealing with. But uh, again, a very, very large opportunity. I don't have to talk about the opportunity size in this. Everybody is aware. Uh, we believe in terms of the efforts that we've put with the management team in place over the last 18 months. Uh, we're very, very excited of how we want to build this. We see a significant room of growth opportunity here. Currently, we have six lending partners. Uh, uh, we, we do this business as, as uh, being partners to them. We don't do this on our balance sheet. And there are many more that are in progress in terms of integrations. And this, we believe that this is another big opportunity that we will unfold in terms of growth over the next quarter, next few quarters. Uh, I, that's all from my side. I'm requesting Sunil now to uh, please take us through the financial numbers, please. Sunil. Thanks, Sanjeev. Good evening, everyone. So I'm covering uh, this uh, through this slide is uh, with respect to financial highlights of Spice Money. Uh, 
which is having this uh, financial technology services business and uh, for this quarter uh, gone by uh, we have done a customer gtv of 27000 crores against a uh, 25500 crores in the previous quarter which is a uh, 7% growth on the customer gtv side and uh, on the revenue side uh, there's also growth from in service fees uh, by 5% uh, in comparison to the previous quarter uh, though our gross margins looking like here is uh, lesser in comparison to the previous quarter uh, this is due to uh, the adjustment we can refer to the note uh, we have put in uh, with a star mark that's uh, there is some accounting practice which we were doing it with respect to the our devices accounting uh, which we can see that from last uh, year same quarter uh, the gross margin was 5 crores which has now come down to 2 crores this that's uh, only the impact of 3 crores uh, so if we see apple to apple then uh, we have uh, grown in the gross margin also in this quarter in comparison to the previous quarter um, and uh, indirect cost is also uh, almost flat not increased in terms of uh, uh, the way we have grown uh, from the previous years same quarter and abitta <coughs> is looks like as uh, uh, 2.6 crores uh, in comparison to the 5 crores in the previous quarter uh, the the reason i had explained that's uh, with respect to the device accounting uh, that why that's why this beta is also uh, looking lower but uh, which is almost a flat uh, in terms of quarter to quarter comparison uh, and if we see the depreciation piece uh, what i had explained that and this note uh, first note explained about that the depreciation uh, on the devices which we were capitalizing we have discontinued it from 1st april and uh, uh, result of that is uh, that our depreciation is uh, lower in this quarter and having uh, due to the same our uh, abit is uh, better in comparison to the previous quarter and if we see uh, our service fee gmo on service fee revenue uh, that is uh, continues to be at the same level 37 percent to 38 percent yeah we can move to the next slide please so here is the consolidated financial summary uh, uh, as mentioned by the lip and that we have uh, we have discontinued the business of digital technology services segment and uh, which has been reported separately so now the consolidated financial summary uh, besides the discontinued uh, operations uh, comes under this slide which have a spice money business primarily and uh, other uh, some corporate and other uh, income that's coming under this slide so if we see that uh, uh, on the uh, abitta side there was a negative on others cost which is almost 2 crores and uh, on the abit side uh, we have a better uh, positioning from uh, this quarter that's a uh, 8 crores 7 crores coming out from spice money and 1 crores coming out from uh, others which is not uh, allocated directly to spice money so this is the consolidated financial summary the same uh, reasons of uh, what uh, i have covered in the previous slides that is also mentioned over here Uh, in this slides on the right hand side uh, that's the change in the device accounting and consequently the depreciation has also got decreased we can move to the next slide please so this is the uh, just a uh, summary of the discontinued operations uh, though there is a operating uh, loss uh, in this quarter with respect to Uh, 1 crore rupees and there is an exceptional item due to discontinuation of the business the goodwill and uh, one of the disposal of the subsidiary to coming out from this uh, discontinued business so there is a uh, 
this is a one time item of 6 crore rupees and in tax expense because of uh, we could not carry uh, forward the deferred tax asset and that has been also uh, written off uh, of 13.4 13.43 crores and due to this reason that uh, profit after tax is looking uh, negative 21 crores so these exceptional item and this one time write off will not be there going forward and uh, hopefully we will be um, having uh, very minimal uh, losses with respect to because we have discontinued the operations so uh, going forward the consolidated results will be without this business which is which was uh, dragging the results of the uh, company on overall basis uh, i think that's all from my side uh, i uh, give it back to uh, shiv yeah i'll take it for the question and answers yes thanks to i uh, will now commence our interactive uh, session over q and a we will take questions from all participants please state your name and the firm that you represent to identify yourself before asking your question we will be taking questions via chat uh, as well in case any participant would like to type in questions even that is available now we'll wait for a moment for questions and uh, we will we'll start the q and a session the first question from the line of uh, debashish neyogi am i audible yes yeah uh, first of all congratulations uh, sir uh, the kind of infrastructure uh, you all have created uh, on ground and rural is commendable uh, so uh, if i were to uh, look at look at it in a outside in perspective what i see is that if i break the business as phase 1 which has already happened and what you're going to get into phase 1 was uh, you know building uh, a simple and convenient banking solution innovative new products to meet evolving needs of uh, consumers and adhikaris you have built a good uh, distribution network so that was phase 1 now your phase 2 growth uh, what i see sir is going to come from uh, mainly correct me if i'm wrong is you're looking at credit and banking as a big opportunity so my question to you i have few questions my first question to you is that uh, credit is a different ball game so are you going to take uh, credit uh, risk on your books is uh, will the aum come your, to your books or it is uh, just you are using uh, the platform for the lending partners where the aum will sit on lending partners book hello devashish you want to just uh, maybe give uh, outline all your questions and we could just then answer them one by one or this was the only question you had no no i have few questions this is my first question yeah. uh, second uh, second question is uh, uh, on the you referred uh, on one of the slides uh, on mfi uh, 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 there's a emi collection a bit or through bbm uh, bb yes if you could elaborate on that uh, because uh, uh, are you are you also collecting from mf um, on behalf of mfis that was uh, the second question uh, third question is uh, who is your closest competition you are unique in nature specifically in rural but if uh, i were to you know force you to name our nearest competitor or who you feel is a good good competitor who you are benchmarking with who would it be that is the third question uh, fourth question is that uh, since it is a you know b2b and b2c business also in a way so what has been the consumer experience uh, as per you uh, and uh, fifth question uh, which is very important what you feel this is a very crowded space where the what i understand is the barrier to entry is uh, on a lower side so from that perspective what you feel is the competitive edge uh, for uh, the spice um, i think for now these are five questions i will get back to the queue later because otherwise other people will not be able to ask so if uh, my other questions doesn't get answered i will come back but these are the five questions which i had 
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Devashish, uh, you know, for these questions. Uh, uh, maybe what I'll do is give it a first crack and then uh, Sanjeev and Sunil can add on. Uh, your first question, uh, Devashish, was on the credit business, how we see it. Uh, as you saw in the presentation that uh, we just made, uh, Devashish, uh, today we are looking at tying up with third-party lenders who are leveraging our platform to be able to reach out to both our adhikaris and the customers that are approaching the adhikaris in a low-cost, efficient way. And so, therefore, our approach to credit is purely a platform approach uh, where we are looking to increase both the number of people taking loans as well as the value of the loans overall. And uh, therefore, this is something that we will earn a fee out of, both in terms of connecting lenders and borrowers and effectively taking a marketplace approach to this. Um, on the aspect of MFI, I'll let Sanjeev uh, talk about that later, uh, as well as on competition. I think uh, the your point, consumer experience, uh, for us, uh, Devashish, our adhikaris, which are the entrepreneurs in semi-urban and rural, are our principal customers. And they are the ones who are using our app and web product on a daily basis. And they are the ones who we track our consumer experience with. So in, both in terms of the time spent on the platform on a daily basis, uh, the drop-offs that happen, and uh, the whole uh, ability to navigate through the platform to be able to you know, uh, use multiple products and services is something that we measure consistently to be able to track consumer experience. Uh, so for us, uh, you know, our entrepreneurs are our cons consumers and effectively for us, you know, the way they experience the product is what is important to us. And I think your final question on, you know, this is a crowded space. I would say that uh, Devashish, uh, very honestly, we do not see it as that much of a crowded space. Actually, it is a low barrier to entry because it's not a licensed business. Uh, it's a tech business and therefore, you know, uh, people can enter, but, you know, this does require a lot of heavy lifting on the ground in terms of signing up merchants and entrepreneurs on the platform. And uh, therefore, the heavy lifting on the ground is something that any new entrant has to do. And once you have a certain scale of merchants who are using your platform, who are deploying working capital with you and using multiple products, it automatically becomes a barrier for them to switch because there is a switching cost for them to move to other platforms. So I think that is what gives us a competitive edge, being one of the early players of the block in terms of uh, you know scaling up this network, both in terms of tech capability as well as on the ground capability of onboarding over a million merchants. And therefore for anyone to replicate this will take time, cost and effort. So that's what gives us a competitive edge. I like uh, Sanjeev, Sunil, maybe Sanjeev, you could begin by talking a bit about our MFI business as well as um, you know competition. Sanjeev. Yeah, sure. So, so the Vashis are adding to what Dilip just said on the point of EMI collection. So collection as a business, uh, the problem statement here, if I can go a bit deeper, is that uh, most of these NBFCs and MFIs, primarily MFIs, have lent to a lot of consumers in semi-urban and rural India. And today what would happen is they would send their uh, agents to go and pick up money, which is the EMI, come back to the branch office, which is in the district headquarters, and deposit the cash over there. Our, our proposition to all of them is, why do you want your agent to come back? Why don't you use our own network of adhikaris for them to as cash collection? So the your agent does not have to come back to your office. He comes and deposits it with the, on the spice money adhikari on the way because my adhikari is there right in the village. So what has become is the, the network of spice money has now also become a collection network for agents of MFIs and, e, uh, and NBFCs for CAT for the loan uh, EMIs. We, we extended this, while this was an agent collection, it's a CMS, the extension is we also have a VVPS, we have a VVPS agent license holder, in which now that there are a lot of MFIs who are already onboarded as, B, on, as builders on BBPS, in which now even the consumers in a village, they can come directly to the Spice Money Adhikari outlet and deposit the EMIs. Now that's a very, very encouraging trend that we have seen once and once the, and this is a very big problem statement, especially with ladies who are the MFI beneficiaries of loans, right? Women, are, which, which is a segment who've taken the MFI loans, they have a, their, their biggest problem statement is going, stepping out of the village for, you know, domestic reasons. And now there is an adhikari in the village. So you know what? He does, he, she doesn't have to step out. She comes here and deposits EMI every month at the Spice Money Adhikari. So 
that's the opportunity that we're seeing, and that's the business model on, on this on the MFI email uh, that you asked about. Who is our closest competitor? Well, question answer. We get, we get this question. We believe we are in a segment of one, which again says that we are. That's where you probably say entry to barrier who are also doing the case. But uh, I think the ability for a network like us to do more services, more products and services like collection, banking, credits, more digital services. I think that we, we find ourselves uniquely positioned and I think that we believe we can win. Uh, sir, uh, this uh, MFI space, which you just mentioned, you know, the, the collection, uh, I've been invested in this space and I closely track for more than a decade, the MFI space. Uh, you know, if you see with all the Black Swan events, uh, that space is growing. I'm saying the sector has been growing more than 20% and it is going to grow more than 20% this, uh, uh, this decade also. You have mentioned the market size as uh, 1,55,000. Uh, I'm not sure. Are you talking only about... Uh, the digital side of uh, the MFI collections or the entire collection here? Because the entire market is, uh, you know, close to 5 lakh crores. Correct. So what I'm, what, so there were two parts we mentioned. One was the CMS market estimate. These are more internal uh, to us. And one was BBPS. That was more of the EMI assisted. And that also mm -hmm. on with, with billers who are on the BBPS platform. So it's a slightly smaller segment that we are, we have we've taken as an opportunity. Like you said, uh, the outstanding is two lakh crores. So the opportunity on, on this in the MFI space is very, 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 very big. Yeah, and this is very unique what you're trying to do. Only thing is, sir, this uh, MFI collection is very high touch business. If you know, so I'm not sure how that touch uh, will get addressed uh, through the Adhikari network. And plus, uh, you know, there are sometimes ch check bouncing happens. So is, is do the system integrate? For example, what I mean is that. Are you tying up with MFI companies where your adhikaris are collecting or it is standalone? So th this is a very interesting question. We can have a longer conversation on this, the Vashis, but uh, some very interesting trends are emerging in this space. What MFI used okay. to be earlier, the Vashis, which means you have to have that, you know, group meetings for collection. Correct. Uh, JLG. J uh, and, the, and, the, and the meeting was very, very important and, and uh, as, a, as a fulcrum to collection. That Correct is dissipating with time. So there is a segment okay. of people, of women especially, uh, who says, you know what, tell me where to deposit the money. I know when I have to do it. I'll come and deposit the money. Uh -huh. okay. And that's a very encouraging trend. Number one. Number two, on the MFI space, they're also encouraging such behaviors because for them, the cost, the economics of collection goes down. Number two. Mm -hmm. Number three, our Adhikari, like I said, we are in two point around 2.5 lakh villages uh, today. So then Adhikari is at the village, which then also becomes very convenient for the lady to come and deposit. And most of this money deposition is happening, not most, actually everything is happening in cash. There's no check bouncing. Mm -hmm. So we are integrated. So since there's live on BPS, we are integrated, the, the MFI is integrated system is integrated on BPS as a biller. We put the money, it's all reconciled. They get a dashboard on a daily basis. Oh, fantastic, sir. And, so, uh, uh, one more question. One more question I have, if, I, if you can permit, you know, uh, how you are getting, how you're acquiring Adhikaris or, uh, you know, uh, the CASA accounts. For example, you said, you know, uh, you are, uh, uh, you know, so could you just elaborate, you know, uh, the your your uh, credit model when the Grahad marketplace, when you're going, I'm not talking about credit to Adhikaris, that is easier because they are on your platform. I'm talking about one level down, the consumer credit, how you're approaching that and how you're approaching CASA accounts. So, so there are two, three, uh, there are two, three parts that we're doing. One is for, so we have this network of 1.2 million. Now that's a large network, but we Correct. definitely believe that you cannot, you cannot chase everyone to do all products, right? So there is a, there is a segment of this network that you start to engage with. You do more of the profiling, you understand their interests, their entrepreneurship level, their own knowledge on this business. 
and that is a segment. So that's why we said we've only onboarded about twenty six thousand adhikaris to do banking to sell accounts, and that also is in the catchment area where we believe there is a potential to do that. Not everywhere. So that's the way we identify the adhikari. We train the adhikari uh, to do this product. On credit, we follow a similar approach of identifying the potential adhikaris. Our obviously the the way the product journey has been designed. and i think that is where we bring the differentiation so you know when when the, when some when asked this question to us what is the right what is the right to win it's actually not only the network it's also the journeys that we build and i think that is where you know we come in of doing a more grounds up product approach rather than just a top down the that leadership at spice money lot of the work is spent on building this product platform and that is also for example the grah market place and why we believe it can be scalable is just it's very easy a consumer comes there he wants to access loan he gets to know instantly the money gets dispersed also right so i think these are the pieces and hence the it's very important for us to work with such lenders who understand these journeys we can we customize all of that uh, so both lens one is the adhikari Uh, uh, who is going to do this business? We need to know that person well. We need to enable that person. Second, the journey of the consumer, the digital product has, has to be has to be very very user friendly from a rural consumer perspective, not urban, which is what we bring. And third is these uh, lenders who are very keen to approach this space. Thank you, sir. I will come in the queue. Let because other people may, must be waiting. Hi, hi, Devashish. Uh, before uh, you close, uh, can you also uh, let us know, share with us the firm that you represent? I think everyone else as well. Uh, yeah, sorry, I am uh, based out of uh, Dubai. Uh, okay. I represent a firm called Digician Investment. Limited. Okay, th thanks for that, Devashish. Uh, we'll take further questions. If anyone else would like to ask questions, either through audio or through the chat, we we are happy to take further questions. Anybody else with questions? Yes, uh, we have the next question, Joseph. Good evening, sir. Hello. Yes, please. Yes, yes. Start with your question. Thanks. Hello. We can hear you. So, sir, uh, I just wanted to understand the uh, difference between these uh, adhikari loans and the grahak loans. so uh, joseph can you hear us yeah yeah basically adhikari loans are joseph's that the adhikaris take for themselves uh, these are the entrepreneurs who are on our platform using the app and grahak loans are the loans that adhikaris enable their customers who we are referring to as grahak to take so adhikari loans are loans taken by the adhikari and grahak loans are loans taken by the grahak that visit the adhikari okay 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 and uh, sir uh, hello am i audible yes yes you are and you can continue please thanks yeah uh, so sir uh, sir uh, can you just uh, uh, give a brief about this business model about this credit space uh, and how are we are operating and uh, uh, what are our plans to compete with the other companies Sanjeev, you want to take it? Yeah. So, uh, Joseph, firstly, I think the opportunity is it's out there in public space of the opportunity of credit in rural India. Uh, so these are some mind-blowing numbers. I don't think that is something we want to talk about. Number one, number two, I I feel the opportunity for players like us, which is what we're trying to solve, is again the lack of access of credit. So on one side, there are today there are a lot of lenders uh, including ngfcs uh, who want to lend to this space there are consumers who want to get that but there is there the ability to marry the demand and supply in in areas like rural and densely urban according to me according to us at spice me is missing to building on that the opportunity to customize the products for those consumers is missing because the need the demand for uh credit is is very because the economic cycles the monetary cycles the 
ecosystem is very different than uh, urban India. So I think these are the few pieces that we are trying to work on to win the uh, or or leverage the credit opportunity. I think that's done. Uh, next, we have a few questions on the chat. Yes, uh, the, the next question comes from uh, Rishu Dhavan. Uh, he, Rishu has four questions. Uh, would you like me to read all questions together or one by one? Go ahead, sir. Uh, the impact of legacy business in PNL in future quarters, will it be like zero revenue and zero re uh, expenses? That is completely shut down now. Firstly, that's the first question. For, for, the, for this year, 23, 24, what will be the driver of growth? Which segment we feel will gener generate more revenues and profits? Third question, in the near future, is there any operating leverage that we anticipate because of the platform or the products that we build? Question number four is just a minute. Just, uh, we could just start uh, with, with those. Uh, yes, th there is another question. Uh, what is the scope of cross-selling like insurance products? Well, that's from Najib. Yeah. So four questions. Yeah. So let me take the first one. Um, so that you can add to this. So basically, as far as the digital technology segment business is concerned, which we're calling the legacy business here, uh, you can already see in quarter one results, we have not included the and the expenses associated with this business and the consolidated financials that have been presented is basically covered as a profit and loss line item of discontinued operations. So Rishu, uh, already in quarter one itself, you can see revenue and expenses only being reflected of the continuing business. Uh, is it a complete shutdown? Yes, uh, we have completely exited the B2B business. But like we said last quarter, uh, these are B2B contracts that we have to serve out. Uh, we are not extending the duration of these contracts. In fact, in most cases, we are handing over to other vendors. So it is a complete shutdown, but it is has to be done in a in a phased manner uh, because we have customers whose contracts we need to honor. Uh, so we are phasing down the expenses, uh, and of course, the revenues are are falling as uh, are, are also phasing down uh, side by side. So that's why I said that the impact of this. Uh, legacy business will continue in the consolidated financials, but we'll see it as a separate line item of profit and loss from discontinued operations. So, uh, you know, directionally, uh, as you see the consolidated financials up to profit and loss from continued operations is what will indicate the business going forward. And hopefully from next financially onwards, uh, you know, the discontinued operations line itself will go away. So, Nelly, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I think uh, next... Uh... Two to three quarters, uh, we will be seeing it uh, coming down revenue and cost also uh, simultaneously. And uh, in the phase manner, it will be uh, kind of close. Uh, that's all. Uh, it's yeah. I think the next question uh, in terms of what is going to be the driver of growth, uh, I think Sanjeev spoke about that in terms of what will generate new revenues and profits, Rishu. I think it's a lot to do with all the new products that are being launched and Sanjeev spoke about that, the EMI loan collection market, which is significant and how uh, you know our network can serve as a very strong collections network for a lot of the loans that are given out in rural India. Uh, account opening, Sanjeev spoke about that, both current and savings account, huge demand for such accounts uh, and uh, credit, uh, a huge segment, uh, unserved, uh, underserved needs, and then a whole host of other digital services. So I think, uh, you know, what you're already seeing in one of the slides that uh, uh, you saw in terms of the product diversification, I think all of that is going to, you know, add to, uh, you know, the new revenues and uh, and profits from the platform business in the future. And I think it kind of leads into the next question around leverage, right? Because eventually the costs are not going to scale in line with uh, revenues and therefore it's going to deliver on leverage. Uh, Sanjeev, you want to add anything to that? No, no, I think Rishu, so I'm going from the last three uh, answers. Fundamentally, this model is built to generate operating leverage. That is what this model is all about. Uh, I think in today's uh, deck, and that's why I wanted to call out the product diversification, because that is the root. 
to generate operating leverage. More and more products that we start to scale, more and more margin that they start to deliver, is uh, is is the it, it translates directly into the bottom line. I, I think that is the unique opportunity we are sitting in. Are we are we are we confident that we'll be able to deliver? We're extremely confident that we'll be able to deliver. Yes, uh, this is one follow-up question from Rishu once again. I think it's uh, it's about uh, your margins in loan EMIs, collections, credit, and account opening. What kind of margins do you have in, in these segments? So, Neil, you want to talk about that? <clears throat> so, uh, on the collection, uh, on the EMI side, this is uh, on the BVPS platform, which is a standardized uh, uh, charges and the margin for us. Uh, it's almost uh, uh, 28 to 30 percent what uh, we uh, have for our service versus gross margin uh, ratio so that is in line with that and with respect to uh, on the credit side because we are earning a fee uh, income over there uh, so that has a on the basis of the collection and also on the uh, uh, dispersal and uh, um, kind of administration charges. So it comes around to be in the range of 1.5% uh, to 3% of the loan dispersed and collected. Okay. Thanks, Sunil. Uh, uh, next, we have another question on the chat. And uh, this is from Amit Tiwari from Rain Investments. If you could throw some more light on Grahak Marketplace. Uh, though it's in the beta stage, uh, what is your arrangement with Adhikari? So, Amit, uh, I'll answer that. Again, like we said, we've just gone uh, live with this this quarter. We started we started very briefly last quarter, about 38, if I remember the numbers correctly, uh, uh, consumers were given loans. And this quarter has become nearly 1,500. Right? But it's early days. The model is like we just spoke about that there is an adhikari who on this platform, he's able, able to show that there's, if there's a consumer who wants credit, he can he or she can come here and basis some underwriting, which is basically on, on, on the credit bureau score, uh, is what the person gets a uh, uh, loan instantly. Uh, early days, so there are different now product programs that we will be launching for different graphs. That is what we're doing. So if you remember, there's one more line that I put in there that we've also initiated a BNP QR product and there are some early code signs there also that we are experiencing. So to focus, to enable a merchant, to enable an adhikari to offer credit to the consumers that come to him or her is the opportunity. That is this whole graph marketplace. So it's a, it's a marketplace which will have all lenders uh, enabling this uh, credit through the adhikari. And uh, Amit, just to add to Sanjeev's point, I think we do see it as a two-way marketplace, uh, many to many. So a lot of lenders who want to secure lending uh, in uh, semi-urban and rural India, um, you know, today find it very difficult for them in a cost-viable way to access consumers. But by being part of our digital marketplace, uh, they can get access to lots of consumers and their data and be able to underwrite digitally and be able to disperse some capital directly into their account. So I think uh, our platform serves as a good way to capture leads, uh, data used for underwriting, and eventually, uh, you know, be able to uh, make sure that they can scale up, um, you know, on their products, uh, you know, in a cost viable way. Well, I think. Uh... The uh, next question comes in from Rajiv Mehta. Uh, any plans of starting remittances business? What is the percentage of total Adhikari payout? That I think, uh, and third, uh, who are our top two competitors? I think Rajiv has put one more question earlier about scope of cross-selling like insurance products. Mm. Yes. Um, yeah, That's so correct. Rajiv, you're right. I think insurance is another one important opportunity that we must chase and win in, in, in SME admin in rural India. But like I've been always saying that, you know, we want to take our products one by one and we're very serious about building them. 
and I think that is the confidence that you will you will take away for the last two years. That we started with the, the vanilla e-based business is what we started with. Then we went into collections. We're scaling that up. It's already showing progress. Now we're moving to banking and, and credit, and in, in, and insurance is definitely part of the roadmap. So we will take it up. But once we want to scale up these three products over the next at least twelve to eighteen months to a significant level, is when we will now also take up insurance. Yes. Great. I think uh, next, I think we can take this. Uh, I think Devashish Neogi wants to ask some further questions. So Devashish, all yours. You could ask. No, sorry, no, no. Rajiv still had question on any plans of starting remitting business. Which remittance business is this? Uh, I think there is a bit of domestic remittance which we are a part of. We are not very keen to build that business, not from any other reason, but just because that we are more on the receiving side in terms of geography, more in the semi-urban rural India, and remittance happens from urban to semi. So we are more in the receiving end. Hence, domestic remittance is not an important part. If you're talking international remittance, nothing that we started right now. Uh, not that something we have in, in the immediate future. Uh, what is the person called Adhikari payout? Uh, as a thumb rule, uh, our business model is revolves under making money from the product partners, uh, and about two thirds of the money of that goes to Adhikari. Who are our top competitors? Uh, I just spoke about. Uh, I believe that we are very uniquely positioned in a, and we are in a space of segment of one, uh, which means that we don't, we don't, we're not able to figure out who our competition is. We actually believe we are uniquely placed here uh, in terms of our business model and the opportunity that we are seeing, especially also in the segment that we are operating, which is genuine rural India, uh, primarily, and then some new. But I think uh, next, I think we can go to Devashish. Devashish Neogi, your questions, please. Am I? Yeah. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Um, so my question is: uh, um, Do you Adhikari is our uh, partners uh, for uh, growth? So now uh, uh, you there's a the product has been developed, the platform has been developed, and we are also building on distribution uh, network by increasing number of adhikaris. What uh, do you measure? You know, this adhikari is uh, existing and new, and where from where the growths are coming. Um, so apparently, from the slide, it appears you know, you know, twenty twenty five percent growth is coming from distribution increase, uh, where the number of adhikaris have increased. And the business also correspondingly is increasing, which means there are dropouts uh, from Adhikari and uh, the growth is coming mainly from the new Adhikaris. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that, is there a funnel where you look at existing and new customers and from where the businesses are coming or is it a ticket size growth? I'm saying that kind of uh, data, can you say, share, sir? So, Debashi, let me answer that question. I think... Uh... I think it's, maybe it's important for me to explain what we are trying to do, and I think that will answer the question. Uh, one is what, like you said, Adhikari is an entrepreneur. So at the end of it, uh, he will stay with you. He'll continue to use your platform if you're able to provide him more products and services that he can offer, which means more products he can do, more money that he can make from the platform. If that, uh, if that be the theme, and that is the way we are approaching. Uh, one was. Our entire business model is hinged on first is obviously increasing the distribution in the areas that we are not. So from a coverage perspective, we want to be in all the villages. Right? Uh, we do population, for example, we take out which pin codes and where do we have population density. We are doing per capita uh, density from an Adhikari um, uh, perspective. We use those metrics to define our acquisition strategy of building the Adhikaris. That's one. However, that will still will not solve the purpose because on the second point, you need to learn how can you engage these adhikaris more products and services, and that's exactly the uh, message. If you if you would if you would pick up from our, from my presentation, is being the hallmark of what we've done in the last eighteen months, because earlier we were more of an ATM banking network. That's how we started, but just being a one product would not enable the network to be sticky with you, the adhikari to be sticky. And that is where we ventured onto more products. And that is where I think we raise the opportunity. With more products, we've got more, more Adhikaris doing multiple products. And hence, their retention with us is significant. So I'm just going to answer the question. These are the two strategies. One is increasing the network in areas we have not. So you have to have a minimum distribution density 
to cater to the population. And second is, you have to have more products and services, which is what will help the Adhikari to grow his income and serve this community. That's the model. Sir, uh, you know, I understand what you're saying, sir. But my question uh, is, sir, is still not answered. What, I, what I'm saying is, your reach is 95% of the PIN code. So you have reached. Okay. So, of course, you know, the productivity of the Adhikari may not... Uh, be high in a particular pin code you may replace so you may get new ones or where you see the growth is not coming you are uh, putting adhikaris there my question is that if you look last year's number your adhikari increase has been 23 percent whereas your customer uh, you know gross transaction value has increased by 21 percent which means the entire growth has come from increasing adhikaris so what i'm saying is that when when you have reached 95 percent of the pin code uh, then the business should come from existing existing adhikari. So what I mean is that the top line growth should be more uh, than the increasing adhikaris is what I'm trying to say. So so answer is yes. Now it's, it, there are I think three two to three pointers I can give. You are right. So we continue to grow a network. The network grew by 20 to 23 percent. However, one more thing happened in the industry. The APS industry has degrown. What used to be a core business. Okay. Having said that our GTB has grown because there are other products that fueled that made up for the loss of the EPS business from an industry level. Two, three, like you said, is our growth vis-a-vis -vis just linked to distribution growth? So your question could be that if the distribution has saturated, will the growth happen? Answer is a lot of the products that we're doing might not be GTB for credit is not a GTB enabler. Banking is not a GTB enabler, but there are more, there are more margins in it. Collection has a GTB impact. So they're now the number of the products that you're entering, it is not the GTV is only an indicator of the growth. It's also margin because a lot of the products do not have a GTV impact. They have margin impact. Thank you, sir. Uh, you know, uh, thank you, you know, for answering all the questions so candidly. You know, it increases our understanding. Also. Thank you, sir. My last question, sir. You have a bouquet of products, okay? And you have built distribution. Uh, you have built... Uh, your digital, uh, you know, uh, asset. So my question is that: Is there any particular strategy of upsell and cross sell? So, uh, Devashi, that's exactly what I'm saying. I mean, it's all about upselling to the adhikari. So today, like I said, all these products they are layering on top of each other. We started with EPS, then we started with collections, then okay. we started with banking, okay. then we started with credit. So today, for example, one of the matrices that we track is. How many adhikaris are doing more than three products? That's okay. nothing but cross sell. That's nothing but upsell. And actually, okay, I understand, sir. you see, both your questions are kind of connected, right? Because as we move towards a multi product platform, we expect our existing adhikaris to start using the platform to do multiple products, Devashish, and therefore the operating leverage point that you were making that the scale in revenue should be faster than the scale in the network. And that's the point on operating leverage that we believe that. We have an opportunity going forward as we scale on products. Understood, sir. Thank you, sir. So, so people also contribute, sir, must be contributing an important factor. Though it's a digital business, but controlling the adhikaris, you would be, must be having a proper organizing structures to, uh, I'm talking corporate structure or the field structure to manage the adhikaris. So people also play an important role in your business? Yes. Devashi's answer is today we are uh, we are about 1,100 employee strength internally, which is spread across distribution technology, corporate product, and support functions. Uh, apart from this, we have a network of about 4,000 uh, distributors whom we call partners, who, are, who in their local geography, which is more at a uh, more than a district, so two blocks, maybe at a block level, they manage a set of adhikaris on in terms of acquisition, servicing, and, and you know upselling. So, so we have so that's the structure that we have today, Devashish. Uh, What's your biggest challenge, sir? What is your biggest challenge? So the, the biggest challenge, Devashish, is that this uh, market that we're talking about, these products that we're talking about. I think not many players, or I, I don't know how many players have been able to. Crack this operating model, demonstrate success, and you know, being able to gen demonstrate multi-product uh, sale. I think that is the opportunity. One, 
uh, and that is an opportunity that's a challenge you're not being able to do so you know there's a lot of customization you need to understand rural very well you need to design products you need to you need to marry the demand and supply everybody knows there is a demand everybody knows there is supply question is who, who can marry the demand and supply i think that is where the meat is that's where the opportunity is uh, second on, on, on at a very operating level hence if you are able to do that the adhikari entrepreneur stays with you because he does more and more products and services he does he owns more and more so it's it's a chicken and egg situation how can you how can you marry uh, the right product With the right adhikari to serve the right consumer in the right market, I think that's the operating model that yeah, we need to crack. And we believe that we've been able to crack a uh, few. We're on the on, on the verge of, I mean, on the path of being able to do for others. And that is that is our challenge and opportunity. Avashish. So you you have built a brilliant uh, infrastructure. In fact, you know now you're per- completely focused on. Uh, on digi spice okay so and the presentation is crisp sharp and very easy to understand so uh, all the best to you sir my last question sir is what is the risk to the business as per you i'm saying business you know you being you know running this business for uh, for quite some time as a company what do you feel is the biggest risk i think uh, devashish uh, right now uh you know single product dependency i i think uh, you know aps as a category continues to contribute significantly to our gross margins and like sanjeev mentioned this industry has been facing tailwinds uh headwinds in terms of uh, overall size of the offers aps market and that's why we've been trying to grow our market share in a in a, in this market so i think uh, uh you know just product diversification and uh you know i i think regulation wise uh, devashish we uh, you know it's it's a heavily regulated space financial services uh i i think uh, you know regulation is constantly evolving around lending and 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 other spaces uh so these are something which is work in progress but i think uh, from a business point of view i think the, the you know just having a lot of your margins come out of few products is is the biggest risk that we carry Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, sir, for answering all the questions so candidly, transparently, uh, and openly. Thank you, and all the best, sir. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Devashish. Uh, uh, I think uh, with that we have uh, addressed all the questions from participants in the call today, and I would now like to hand it over back to the management of uh, Digi Spice and Spice Money for any closing comments. Well, uh, thank you, thank you, Chef. Uh, Uh, let me once again, on behalf of the management of Digi Spice Technologies and Spice Money, thank everyone who's taken time out to join us on this call. Uh, we are a company which is work in progress, and uh, just the parting thoughts uh, that I would like to share with all of you is that we are in a very exciting space, which is containing many demand pools which are unserved, underserved in the financial services segment. Uh, but like we said, it's we are in a segment of one. uh you know we're constantly focusing on uh, product innovation with the right set of partners to be able to get our adhikari network to deliver a lot in terms of penetration of financial services in deep rural and semi urban india we believe that as we continue this journey it will place us in a unique position uh you know and really be able to add value to both sides to a large base of consumers over 80 crore consumers who are living in rural and semi urban india who are lacking access and a whole host of product players who are wanting to reach out to them and how digital platforms can serve as a most optimal way for them to be able to do it in a cost efficient manner so we are continuing in this journey we hope quarter on quarter we'll be able to share with you our progress and if there's any other uh, you know insights uh, experiences that you can share with us uh, we are all reachable uh, you know so would love to stay connected even during the course of the quarter on behalf of sanjeev sonil and all of us thank you so much and uh, we hope to stay connected thank you yep.